Hey, Cock 45, your internet shooting companion, coming to you from the beautiful hills of Middle Tennessee. Yes, the beautiful green hills, greening hills of Middle Tennessee. Tennessee, the home of Alvin York. Oh man, Davy Crockett, uh, you name it. Everybody is from Tennessee. Johnny Cash, everybody has lived in Tennessee, right? <laughs> Some time or other. Uh, so it's, uh, it's unfair. Uh, maybe we should limit that to people who were born here. But then, I don't know, we'd be eliminating a lot of people, including myself, who are Tennesseans by choice. You know, you could argue that, uh, that that's even more uh, impressive, you know, for your state. If you uh, chose Texas or Illinois, uh, Illinois, Tennessee, Kentucky, you moved there and you did business there, you lived there for a long time, okay? Anyway, good to see you. Hope everybody's uh, hanging in there. Uh, we're at what day of wherever we are, you know, Sunday, right, April 19th, I guess 19th. So, uh, ooh, uh, almost, well, we got ways to go to get through April, but it won't be too long. And it looks like, you know, things are going to maybe open up a little bit in some areas, right? Depending on where you live. Maybe it will return to being very cool to live in the country, you know, where you can pull out a gun and shoot it. <laughs> uh, yeah, really. Uh, uh, and that's, a, that's just the way it's been. And you know, people who live in New York City or Chicago or LA, you know, San Francisco, you know, those are cool places to live. You live out in rural America in some town no one's heard of. You don't really matter. You don't even count. Fly over country and all that sort of thing. Not that everybody has that attitude. Probably most don't. Anybody who has traveled, anybody who is a brain with any sophistication, anybody who's been around a little bit. Uh, many people in New York and L.A. and different places, they have relatives or folks out in the rural America somewhere or the Midwest. and. They know that's not you know, necessarily the case, but there, there's some narrow-minded people, right? A lot of narrow-minded people, I have to tell you that. So maybe it will be even cooler to live uh, in small-town America after this. You know, I mean, that's just, the, that's just the nature of things, though, isn't it? Uh, if you're packed in with a lot of people, guess what? If something happens, uh, it's worse. You know, I mean, whatever it is, the earthquake, a heat wave, a tsunami, a terrorist attack, uh, you know, an outbreak of some kind, it's just going to be worse, generally speaking. I guess some things are worse if you're out maybe in the middle of nowhere, but uh, yeah, anyway. So, shoot a little bit, talk a lot. I started to say talk a little bit, you know, probably won't. I'll tell you what, when, when uh, this close down is over, I'll try to be more brief. See, now I can justify these long, gun cleaning videos hope you saw that <laughs> at least as much as you could stand these long videos uh i can justify it because i know you're sort of a captive audience you're tired of whatever that you're having to do every day <laughs> in the house and having a hard time even getting out and that kind of thing depending on where you live some places people really are locked in they uh, probably you don't even want to go out. Maybe you're up in an apartment or something like I've talked about. And it takes an elevator to get out. And you just got to uh, be in proximity with a lot of people. Touch a lot of things a lot of people have touched to even get outside. And then there's maybe people out there too. You don't want to be, I don't know. Depending on how bad it is where you are. Okay. So anyway, I was meant to be loading up this gun. Uh, depending on where you are, I mean, uh, that we've come to learn is really not that bad, right, in a lot of places. And hence the reason for starting to open back up, okay? The risk is always there. Uh, again, I'm in a high-risk group. I'm an old guy. Uh, so I can speak to this. Uh, I've said several times, maybe here, uh, that I'm okay if we kind of lock down the old folks or the, and the people who have health problems. Uh, I mean, it's sorted by your choice. Should be your choice still, though. It could even be more a, an issue of choice, right? Uh, the way we've been doing it, we've just oh yeah, everybody locked down, man. Stay away from everybody as much as you possible. Well, what if we we just say okay, we're going back to business pretty much. 
if you have a, a, a you know, we all know what the, the conditions are, obesity, diabetes, being old, being stupid or whatever. We know all those conditions that really put you at high risk and some much higher than others. Just being old is not seemingly enough, really. It depends on your immune system, but you generally have a, a less strong, weaker, in other words, uh, immune system, the older you are, I guess. But, uh, but we just kind of get people back to work doing stuff. And then uh, if you're in that category, which I don't know what that percentage of people would be, plus the old folks maybe aren't working anyway, most of them, right? The older you get, the less you're out you know, in the workforce. So you guys just stay home. You all stay home. All right, and everybody else go back to life as usual. And then if you have a health condition, you know who you are, pretty much. And uh, I mean, you get a break at work and everything. You know, my gosh, what this has cost the economy, uh, business, and, and everybody, uh, we, we could very easily say, okay, so you got diabetes? Okay, guess what? Just go ahead and stay home. We'll pay you double. You know, I mean, you know, it'd still be cheaper than what we're doing. <laughs> so anyway, I just, I just thought that's, that's one option. I'm okay with that. As long as I have the freedom to make my uh, choices and to take my own risk, right? So uh, uh, I'll, I'll uh, evaluate that on my own and as I have been doing, uh, what are my chances of getting it? What's my immune system like? And if I go out and get it, hey, that's on me. You know, so I don't know. Anyway, can I shoot this gun? All right, 357 Magnum. Woo! 357, let's just pull, pop a bowling pin. Uh, yeah. Boom. Quick. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking about. I did the John Wayne load like I've taught y'all, and I uh, and when you brought drop the first hammer, it's on an empty empty chamber. Okay. So, yeah, I got a 357. So what in the world is that? Have we seen that? Some of you have, and you can tell us what it is. It's a uh, a Halls. Okay. <laughs> This is a little odd. You may not have seen one of these. It's kind of windy today. I'm sorry if you uh, get too much wind noise other than the windiness you're getting from me. J.P. Sire and Son, made in Western Germany. Wow, it's a Halls. Uh, Texas Marshall, 357 Mag. Halls Firearms, Los Angeles, California. Some of you have these. I've heard from you on those videos. And uh, not a common firearm. But leave it to dad. Uh, he was a cowboy at heart. I told you about us watching westerns together. And he bought this. And I, oh gosh, what year was it? Would it have been? Probably in the 70s. Okay, sometime in the 70s he bought this. And uh, he, he really liked it. He really liked it. And it is, it's, it's kind of like one of the early Ruger Vaqueros. It's a bit of a tank, it's really well built and heavy. Uh, and 357. Yeah, I couldn't talk to him. I used to make fun of him for, Dad, Cowboys didn't carry 357 Magnums? Come on. But uh, he loved it. He loved that caliber and 38s and everything. And could shoot both in it. And uh, he really enjoyed this firearm. I think I've told you, he wasn't a gun nut like I am. But he grew up around guns and, you know, and hunting some. And he was in, you know, World War II, military and everything. But he wasn't, you know, he didn't have the bug like I do, but he liked firearms. He even got into reloading after I did, and 30-30 uh, Winchester, and, uh, he, you know, he was such a cowboy, he, he got into it. Uh, and I've got two or three of his firearms, this being one of them. He gave me first choice, you know, in his will, and uh, this is what I chose. And he had several firearms, but uh, I, I knew this was his favorite. I already had the 22, you you've seen. But uh, so this is the one I wanted. I didn't care what my brothers wanted. But you can have the rest of them. Uh, that's pretty much yeah, the way it was. So uh, pretty neat. So anyway, he passed in April, you know, this week and everything. And I was thinking about it in the same kind of weather and the blustery day. I remember at the funeral at the, uh, at the cemetery and everything. It was just so much like this week, you know, 26 years ago. And uh, you know what, I haven't shot his firearm in a while. And it's my duty, it's all of us, it's our duty to keep, keep, to keep things going for people that can't do it, right, to some extent. And so it's my job to keep 
this firearm limbered up. He bought it new, he really liked it. He really did, it had a holster for it and a rig and all that. And he would go out to, we had a farm growing up part of the time I was young and, and they always had one after that. And I went away to school and different things, but I'd, I'd be home in the summers and come back and it, they would go out to the farm, didn't have a house on the second one. And they'd have a garden out there and different things. It was out in Grant County, Kentucky. And uh, he would always take this gun with him and the 22 and go out there and he would shoot something. No matter what he was doing, how much work he had to do out there, bush hog, do some mowing, work in the garden, pick beans or whatever. But he'd always have the gun and he would shoot the thing, you know, because I went with him lots of times. But he would tell you, it wasn't because I encouraged him, hey, let's shoot some. He took it and he had targets, a couple of targets set up. And so anyway, I thought I would get it out and shoot the thing uh, again. Uh, it, it, it's not a gun I would buy. And uh, inanimate objects don't have a life, right, of course. But things that are inanimate kind of have whatever life we assign to them, right? That's what sentimentality is all about. You know, uh, an engagement ring, a wedding ring, a locket that, that someone has, or uh, all the things that, that you have, obviously they're an inanimate object, but uh, we give them meaning, of course, right? We give them meaning, just like the anti-gunners give firearms meaning. They're assault rifles, assault guns. They're evil, right? Whereas assault is not a firearm, it's, a, it's an action, you know? But we assign uh, human characteristics were really personifying. It's personification, really. You can get right down to it. There's no such thing as an assault rifle, per se. You can call it that, you can name it that, but, uh, so. Here I am getting philosophical already. All right. All right, Dad, these are for you. Magnums. Magnums. Kill a hog for him. Oh. Got him in the back. You know what? I just remembered the last time I got it out, I was having some issue with it. And I couldn't remember what it was. It had been so long since I'd had it out. And I guess it was when I was firing Magnum ammo. And I'm not sure what it is. Uh, that may be the last shot I take today with that. That's one reason I even got it out. I thought, because it's crossed my mind several times. Now, the last time I had that out, it, it act, something was wrong with it. And I had a problem with the grip breaking, and I super glued it and fixed it a while back, a couple of years ago. And I was confused. I, was it more grip problems? And I just couldn't remember because I put it away a couple of years ago, last time I shot it. But it was something about that, the cylinder advancing and I don't know if it's a recoil shield loosening up on it or something. So the hammer is down on an empty uh, case and I'll just deal with it later. And obviously I will uh, spend whatever it takes to get this fixed. Uh, I've got, I, I know a couple of good gunsmiths and they're always so booked up. It's, uh, it's the only problem. <laughs> you take a gun to a gunsmith, uh, a really good one, and so often, it's a year later, right? Six months, you know, before you get, get your gun back. I've gone through that a couple of times lately. With Dad's gun, it's not important. I don't shoot that often. I just like to keep it limbered up and, uh, and I want it done right if it takes three years. Of course, at my age, I can't wait on a gun too long. I have passed up on firearms before recently that had a little gunsmithing work that needed to be done on it, maybe get a good buy on it, a better buy than you normally would because Man, I just, I've gotten where I hate to take a gun to the gunsmith because uh, it's like it's gone. I had that happen with the Webley, gone a year. Uh, uh, I had a 22 rifle, same thing, a Model 39A, really neat, uh, cream puff, you know, great shape, an old one. And it was at the gunsmith for, on total, about a year and a half. A couple of different gunsmiths and, and moving around, and, and I, I, I gave it up. I gave up on it, gave it away to a gunsmith, some, some guy that was really trying to, to figure it out, what it was with it, really good guy. I just gave it to him, so look, you can get it working, just give it to a kid or something, do something. <laughs> I had I had a thousand dollars in that thing before it was over, you know, buying it in the gunsmithing, uh, you know, prices and fees and everything. 
but anyway, well, too bad. Okay, I don't want to piddle with it right now. I'm, I'll mess with it, get my screwdrivers out, and take it take it apart, and see if I can get that, that loose, and see if I can figure out what it is. I'll let you know how about that next week, if I can figure it out. But it is got live rounds in it, so it's not the kind of thing I want to fool with, uh, taking the cylinder out and, and messing with it, because it won't advance. So what am I going to talk about today? Wow, I've already spent 15 minutes, probably. I don't know, I was going to talk about, uh, oh gosh, I don't know. Maybe some advice on, uh, I've been getting a lot of questions on uh, people starting up YouTube channels lately while they're home, <laughs> all that kind of thing. The government uh, uh, protests we're seeing. I don't know what else we let I have. I might talk about some uh, more philosophy, guns we've been shooting, uh, some safety issues, and yeah, who knows, who knows what else. And again, you new people, uh, you have a lot of new people coming on board as usual. This is uh, shooting and talking. Yeah, this is all this is. This is the Sunday shoot around. All right. I will show you this. Maybe I'll shoot this. I wasn't going to shoot it, maybe, because I have shot it. But it's shooting and talking. So, new folks, relax. And, uh, I mean, get upset if you want to. It's fine. <laughs> it doesn't affect me. Uh, I do what I want to do. We do what we want to do. It doesn't matter what other people do or say, really, other than uh, the. Well, it matters because we, we see suggestions and, uh, you know, that, that matters. But as far as people just upset about the way we do things, that has absolutely no bearing because, you know, we've been doing things the way we do things for a long time. Look what else I got recently, though. You know what it is? Some of you do. Yeah, it's a revolver. <laughs> oh, it's a stainless revolver. Yeah, that's correct, too. This is a Model 60, okay, 38, it's a Model 60. You notice I took it out of a plastic bag in this box, it's an old one, and uh, I bought it recently, in fact we just did a video with it, and uh, you'll be seeing that soon. It was made, guess when, 1970, didn't give you a chance to answer, did I? 1970, just five years after they came out, the Model 60. Uh, basically the first stainless uh, firearm like this in mass production. And uh, they were really, really popular. It's a little J-frame, 38 special. That's what it is, you know. Still had the, you'll see in the video, still had the grease on it. it I mean, literally it was new, brand new. Now I had fired it. And it, uh, I mean, it still looked at force, or the, yeah, the, not the forcing cone, but the recoil shield, if you can see it. It's, uh, I mean, it's still, it's, it hadn't been fired a hundred times, I guess, even now. But it was brand new in the box, 50 years old. So that's just pretty neat, I thought. And I, I didn't have one. I don't think I've ever had one. Now I have one. <laughs> and you'll see it. I may shoot it here in a second. But anyway, um, yeah, the protests, I don't know what the farmers next door are doing, the protests uh, are going on are kind of interesting, aren't they? You know, and that's, that's just... Uh, that's life in the United States. Uh, it's great. I'm enjoying seeing that, you know, because I think in some states, some of the shutdown just doesn't make sense, you know, especially the inconsistencies. So I'm loving it. It's, it's, if nothing else, it's a reminder to government that, hey, we'll cooperate to a point. But hey, guess what? You come out with stupid edicts that, that uh, you know, we're okay. Yeah, you can go to Walmart, but you and you can buy this and buy that, but you can't buy any seed, or you know you can't buy a tomato plant. You know, I know you're home and you're dying to work in your yard, but no, you can't buy a tomato plant. You know, or or a hammer or whatever it is. That's a tool. That's not essential, or you know, whatever. You've heard all the restrictions and how it's so inconsistent, and some ways it doesn't make sense to begin with. Maybe you know. So anyway, uh, I'm I'm enjoying that. I really am. I think. Uh, now some people they live their life to protest, okay? I you know, talked about before. There's some people that uh, they're going to see the contrarian view of everything. It's what drives them. It, it's where they get their self-esteem. I see something you don't. You guys are sheep. You know I'm not. I'm a tough guy. I'm not a sheep. Yeah. There are people you see them on the internet, right? You see them in the gun videos. There, there are people like that, all right, that they're just going to be that way. And, of course, they lose all credibility because everything is wrong to them. Everything is a conspiracy, okay? So, you know, you got that side to it. But then again, when you have just regular people that are not always looking for a conspiracy, 
they're not getting their self-esteem from taking the contrarian view on everything, being the hipster on everything, and they're upset. Okay, now, then it means something. They're they're not crying wolf all the time. You know, when you, it's that old same old concept. You know, some people they just nothing is right. You know, and so. Uh, uh, but when you've got that many people that they just uh, they, they don't see the rationale behind some of this and so they show up at the, uh, the courthouse or at the Capitol and you got to love that you got to love that uh, that's that's what this country is about and uh, it seemed pretty peaceful and maybe they were breaking some of the rules they were not social distancing well too bad you know I mean you know, we all take our own chances you know we take our chances uh, if you think somebody's not social distancing, stay away from them. Move out of the way. You know, I mean, uh, it, you know, if I see a couple of people walking down or a group of four or five, they know the risk, if there is any risk, really, at their age, you know, to speak of. So, anyway, I, th I think it's great. I think it's great. You got to watch people in power, don't you? Uh, you know, power corrupts. You know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. You know, I mean, it's just. This is kind of the nature of uh, human nature. It's human nature to some extent, not with everybody, but uh, it's just so easy when you have that kind of power and that authority to abuse it, even a little bit. Okay, not that you know everybody that's in power is trying <laughs> to be a dictator of the world, but still, uh, for some people, based on their personality, depending on their personality, that's heady stuff, boy. You know, I have this kind of control. And maybe I've not had a lot of control in my life when I was younger. And now that I'm a politician, or I'm the governor, I'm the mayor, or a senator, whatever, uh, representative, I've got some authority here. I'm going to wield it. Nobody's paid attention to me in my life. My gosh, they're going to pay attention now, or uh, whatever it is, whether it's short man syndrome or whatever the heck it might be. Now I've got some authority, you know, tall man syndrome, you know, not to pick on short people, uh, even though, as Randy Newman said, what was the song? Short people got no reason to live. I used to sing that to my students. Just joking. Uh, but, uh, you know, we tall people have our syndromes. Uh, we, uh, as I used to tell my students that uh, when they started talking about height, you know, or asked me how tall I was or whatever, you know, I would always very seriously, and they have told you this, I would say, well, you do realize, don't you, that, that uh, height is directly, or intelligence is directly proportionate to height, you know, how tall you are. You know, I would just pause, and of course, every time, you know, they would, uh, oh, yeah, 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 you would think that, yeah, I, I do, it's true, the shorter you are, the smarter you are, and then they know what to say, so that was, that was my comedy routine, you know, trying to compete with John, but, and that was the beauty of teaching, because <laughs> you, had a, you had a new audience, you know, you think about it, uh, wasn't, it wasn't the only attraction, but for lame humor, or just anything, uh, any trick, prank you want to pull, uh, you had a new class, you know, every hour or whatever, four or five times a day, you could pull, well, you couldn't pull it later in the day, where did you get around, but, you know, the first couple of classes, if they're back to back, maybe even three, you could pull something like that and get by with it, right? Uh, as the day went on, they, uh, they'd communicate, you know, any kind of jokes or even about the test maybe or whatever, so you had to be aware of that, but, uh, but then again, next year, a whole new fresh batch, you know? captive audience so same lame stuff so it was fun uh yeah i was i was terrible i may have told y'all i wasn't even gonna talk about any of this how come i do this i had a one time I, I used to teach to kill a mockingbird the novel taught it for how many years uh 23 years so i should know a little bit about that novel probably don't probably have forgotten everything i know about it uh because i would reread it every year after about the first two or three years you know I remember after the second or third, you know what, I'm gonna reread this thing because uh, it's pretty, it's complex. It's just very deep. The writing is just incredible, you know, Harper Lee. And again, the book is so different from the movie. Well, it's similar, but it's, you know, it's just like, like most cases. You see the movie, you think you know it, but you don't. Uh, and uh, so I would reread it, but uh, every year. And uh, it's just great, great novel. But, uh, Anyway, uh, I uh, one year I, I I had this class. Oh man, they were they were brilliant. You know, I, I taught in a private school, and it was college prep. Not, not being private doesn't make them brilliant, but it was college prep, and this was my best class 
Uh, they weren't really grouped, but they somehow would get grouped because of math and different things. People taking advanced math, different things, like two years ahead where they ought to be or something. They'd sort of end up in the same English class because of that, and it's scheduling, you know, all right? So I had this class, and, uh, and I, <laughs> you know, most of them, I, really, I remember that particular class, most of them had an A average, most of them, really, which is unusual, because uh, I was pretty, pretty tough, but they were really, really sharp, and uh, there were so many kids in that class smarter than I was, you know, it was just, you uh, would stay ahead of them. Luckily, there were 13, so I could uh, just uh, outsmart them on experience, you know. But I got the wild idea one day, and I remember I did it very quickly. I was giving a quiz. I've told you I used to give a lot of pop quizzes, and this was on paper. I'd give a lot of them orally, too, just quick ones. But I'd give them orally, or I'd write them. I had, I had a kind of a template. I would use a, kind of a matching true-false saying. It was just a reading check, make sure they had read what they were supposed to have read. That was mainly what it was. And it would go from there at the class. But that way, everybody came to class having read the material, always, or else they paid a price, right? So it made for a much better class, and classroom discussion. And it, you know, it's like anything else. If you know you're not gonna, you can't get out of reading the material, you'll read it, right? And you'll enjoy it so much better. You'll understand what everybody's talking about the next day. So anyway, so I did that a lot. And I had this one, about 20 questions on it. And uh, just basic stuff, make sure they read it, you know? And uh, I got a, and I did that, my gosh, it was like 15 minutes. I guess I had a free period or something. I did it just 10 minutes or something before class started. I got this wild idea. And uh, just to pick on these kids. And I went to every single item. Some of them were like multiple choice, some were uh, true, false, just very quick. And I rewrote every one of them. It was on word processing, and I can type fast. And I just, I redid every single one of those items just, just very quickly. And I made them all ambiguous sounding, which you have to be, if you know anything about teaching, you gotta be really careful. Every question needs to be very clear. But I did it in a way, it was a masterful job. I, I still have it on, you know, my drive, disk drive. <laughs> but uh, I changed every one of them to where you had to go, uh, oh, I read this and I remember, I remember Atticus Fence shooting the dog, but I don't remember that. You know, I'd ask something about the, that or I would just put stuff in. I did it in a really smart way, believe it or not, to where it would make uh, even a, a really sharp student who had read the material second guess himself and be perplexed. The question wasn't crazy enough that they would just look, because, you know, I had that going. They, they knew I was, I was always joking or doing something. So the, it, I, I had to write them so they wouldn't just look up. Oh, no. Mr. Really, really, really funny, Mr. So-and-so. This is really funny. You know, I read this, and that wasn't in. So I had to avoid that kind of obvious thing. So I, I did it, though, with every single item, and I handed it out. And I had to prep them for the exam before the test, right, or the quiz. So I handed it out, and I, I, had, I mean, I had to run that thing off quickly, got it to them in time for class. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> I had to put on my best face. All right, guess what? I think I even did the pop quiz coin, flipped the coin for the pop quiz, made sure they lost, you know, and handed that thing out. And I acted pretty gruff that day. I said, no, no talking now. I said, uh, you know, just make sure you're not looking at anybody else's, make sure as usual, you're not looking around at all, don't, you know, by accident or anything. I really overdid that. I just said, be careful. And then I just sort of walked around like I maybe was sort of in a bad mood. So they wouldn't, you know, okay, they just stick to the task, you know, not look up. And, Look, because you know the temptation would be, you know, to, what? And then you kind of look at your neighbor, you know, wondering, what's it, are you seeing? Are you getting this? You that kind of thing. So I wanted to avoid any of that. <laughs> and it was great. I gave it. I handed it out, and then I just sort of walked around the room. I walked around. I just didn't look at them much, you know. And I had, had a timer going in my brain. I wasn't gonna like really make them suffer for like two minutes or actually hand the paper in and know they might have failed. I mean, it's just a lot of pressure, you know, and you're, you have an average, you know, maybe a 96 or something and you're, you're always on the Dean's list and you're planning to try to get into, you know, Vanderbilt or a good college or whatever. And I just want to be a good exercise for them. And uh, I let them suffer and stew and it was funny. I'd, I'd catch them, you know, looking at their face. And of course I knew them so well and it was, so much fun to watch them and because they were just making faces and 
and then they would skip. They kept skipping items like you or I would do, you know. Oh, I don't know that one. I'll come back to it. And then there's the next one. You know, and they'd go to the next one. <laughs> and I was loving it. But even I have my limitations. I let them stew for just two or three minutes. I let them get down to maybe six or seven items. And uh, and then I said something. So, what's the matter? You all didn't read the you didn't read the chapter. What's the matter? Did, did y'all not study? What's the matter? Yeah, I just you know, but, and they were looking at me like yeah. So I said, just pass your papers up. I don't think you really want to take this one. So I, I let the cat out of the bag. But I didn't want to actually someone to have a heart attack. Uh, and uh, but anyway, I had a lot of fun with that. And it was kind of neat. I did that another year. I think the next year you're going to do that one time. You know, uh, really per year and get by with it. Unfortunately. But I did it a few more times through the years, and uh, I and it it was kind of neat. And uh, we talked about it afterwards. And I said, I know that was just a prank. You know, I just you know me, I hate I hate kids. That's why I teach. You know, I've got a captive audience, and how can you hate kids if you don't have an opportunity to hate them? You know, so that was part of my shtick. But uh, but it was uh, a good exercise for them too to get right down to it. It was a lot of fun for me, and it was another chance for me to just you know just pick on them, mess with their brains, but it was kind of a, a, an interesting exercise because it was probably the first time, maybe, that those really bright kids knew what it was like maybe to be dyslexic, you know, someone who has a, a learning issue that, that might read a simple sentence, you know, and, and it just get twisted around and not understand simple things sometimes or, you know, whatever, or someone who has a really serious learning uh, condition and, and can't understand what I'm saying right now even you know so so it was kind of an interesting uh, thing and I had a lot of fun with it I don't know why I got off on that story but I did yeah well it's my show right <laughs> uh, what was I going to talk now I don't have time to talk about it uh, do I uh, or I don't know what was I going to you know one thing I was going to say because it was down here the list of, of things uh, in case I don't, I don't want to stop short and not not cover it because we got a lot of new gun owners out there, and some of you might be them. Okay, changed gears pretty fast, didn't I? Uh, but one of the things regarding safety that comes to my mind, and, and I think none of us talks about enough, is you know you've heard me say. I, know, I remember in a video I talked about gun safety and different things and how we have to be careful with manuals to guns. You get a gun, a manual out for the firearm. I got, the other day I opened one up, I had to look up something, how to disassemble it or something. You gotta get to page 15 before there's any information about the gun. Why? Because there's 15 pages of safety stuff and everything is, is absolutely important, right? And highlighted in orange and all this, and this stuff like, you know, make sure the barrel is clear before you, uh, stuff that you, do you need to do but just the common sense stuff don't point this gun at your head with a hammer cocked i mean it's just you know it's like a chainsaw instruction do not put your hand on the chain while it is turning you know don't put your head under the wheel of your car uh, and you, you know it just begins to go in one ear and out the other doesn't it? there's so much of that you know so but one of the things about safety that that's real I mean, it's real, you know, just from experience, you know, I've had a negligent discharge, you know, went into the dirt, you know, I, you know, into, you know, you got to have that gun pointed in the right direction. If you mess with firearms enough, you're going to somewhere along the line through the years, you're likely to have a, oh, I don't know, I won't say a close call, but maybe to fire when you weren't ready or something, or it'd be loaded when you thought it was not or whatever. All right. That's why the four rules of gun safety keep us pretty well safe, because it's always pointed in a safe direction. So if you do that, you know, you're not pointing at something you're not willing to destroy. But anyway, it, it occurs to me, you don't ever want to get cavalier about the gun safety issue, because our brains are just not perfect. I don't care how smart you are, uh, and how uh, finicky and nerdy you are about things, and you always get all the I's dotted and the T's crossed and everything on everything. We're, our brains are just not perfect. We, we know it's unloaded, we just know it's unloaded. Like Mark Twain said, you know, it's not the things we, we don't know that get us in trouble, it's the things we, we, it's the things we know for sure, but the ain't so, but it ain't true, you know, that, that get us into trouble. It's like knowing that gun's unloaded, you know, or, or whatever. Think about this, this occurred to me. If you ever 
misplaced your keys, your car keys. Uh, have you ever misplaced your cell phone? Yeah. Or uh, you went to get it, it wasn't where you just knew you left it. Uh, your belt or just anything, your shoes. Have you uh, just forgotten to mail something? You forgot to pay a bill one month. Oh my gosh, I always pay all my bills. I didn't pay that electric bill. I thought I'd do that online. I didn't do that. And you get an email about it or something. Uh, uh, you know, because I'm kind of like that myself. I, I really, I keep lists, to-do lists, and I have a lot to do and a lot to keep up with, but, and I always have. seem like whatever I've been doing, whatever endeavor, and I don't miss many things, you know? I don't, I've never had a check balance in my life. I don't think I've ever had that happen. I just, I'm nerdy enough that I keep things straight, you know, like that. But I, I mean, I do make mistakes, you know, I forget something uh, occasionally, you know, I'm not perfect, of course, but, uh, but that's the thing, the point. Even if you're really good about all that stuff, you're really good about it, your life's in order and you, you keep track of things and you just don't randomly forget things. You're not always losing your keys. You're not always losing your phone. You know, there's people like that, right? Well, uh, you're not always doing it, but I'll bet you have somewhere along the way. Some day you have, in, in your past, you have misplaced your phone. And it wasn't where you just knew it was or whatever. It was. So in other words, you've had a mental, little mental lapse somewhere, right? Just think back to something. Uh, you thought you put ice in your, your whatever it was you wanted to chill in the refrigerator and didn't do it or just whatever it might be. So we can all make a mistake, all of us. And it could be regarding a firearm, okay? We don't all of a sudden become perfect just because we own these. You could forget that it is loaded, that you left it loaded and thought you didn't, or you thought you cleaned it and you didn't, or you thought you put it in your safe and you didn't, you laid it on top, or you left it somewhere, excuse me, else, I don't know, in the trunk of the car. And then you sent your, your 15 year old son to go out and get something out of the car, you know. Hey dad, do you know there's a gun in the trunk? Oh, yeah, oh my gosh, I meant to get that out. Or that bag with the guns or the gun. I mean, the point is we're all susceptible. So we, we, can, never, we can never let up our focus on that, okay? Because you mess with firearms long enough, it's gonna happen, so you knew people. You know, it's not like, oh yeah, I've read all the safety stuff. Yep, I'm not gonna do anything stupid. Right, we all think that, and we all know that. But our brains aren't perfect, okay? And we make slip, unless you don't ever have a slip up of any kind, you've never forgotten uh, an anniversary or your mother's birthday, your dad's birthday, your birthday, all the things that you like to remember, uh, have you ever forgotten any of them? Or had a slip up anywhere, you know. So, if you, unless you're perfect, and I always have been, you know, you know, these things, it's no place to be imperfect <laughs> if you can avoid it. But that's why the four rules are so important, okay? You treat all guns as if they're loaded, and if you don't point them at anything that uh, you're not willing to destroy, you know, the basic rule of that. Now, for the sake of videos, and I've had people ask me about that. I hold them up for the camera, and I'm standing facing a video. Uh, uh, this comes to mind, you know, all of a sudden. Uh, think about it. If I'm not doing videos, and I go out to a shooting table to shoot, like if y'all were not here, I would come up. I'd be standing over on that side of the table mostly, or at the end. I'd have my guns here like this, kind of like they are, my ammo. And uh, and I would, I would be shooting. The guns would never be pointed up. They wouldn't be pointed back there. I wouldn't be showing them to anybody, you know, in uh, the virtual world of <laughs> YouTube. You know, I wouldn't be doing that, but I'd do it safely. Okay, so when you go to shooting range, those guns are just always pointed down that way. You pick them up, you load them. When you load them, when you shoot, that's just it. Rifle, shotgun, whatever it is. They're not even up in the air, up straight up. It's just rare you need to do that, you know. So just, just a point there, okay? So anyway, for, for new, new shooters, it doesn't matter how long you've been shooting, uh, boy, everybody that's been doing this, they don't maybe like to talk about it, but anybody that's been shooting for 10, 20, 30 years, collecting guns, messing with guns, they've all had a close call and they've, they've of some sort, 
uh, picked up a gun. Oh gosh, I didn't. That was loaded. Oh no, I left that thing loaded, or I left that in the trunk. I thought I got all those guns out of there. There's been something like that that's happened. They may not admit it. Uh, so, so be aware of that. That's the thing. You. That's the first step, isn't it? Uh, you got to just be aware that that does happen, and it could happen if you're not in. If you're just not incredibly focused every time you're around that firearm, just like a chainsaw getting in a car to drive it. That's the most dangerous thing. My car sitting over there is the most dangerous thing I do, getting in that and driving it, okay? I have better control, more control over these, you know, uh, but I'm on the road with everybody else driving, you know, crazy people, see? Anyway, I wanted to make a point of that gun safety in case I run out of time. Uh, and I have no idea when I started. When did I start? You remember what time it was? So I uh, Appreciate you guys coming again, of course, and uh, and the people help us. I thanked, I thanked Federal. I didn't thank uh, uh, Ballastol. Where's my Ballastol? I, I, yeah, that's what I was looking for to spray on that. But you know, Ballastol, Talon Grips, uh, the Sonoran Desert Institute. Uh, we appreciate SDI. <coughs> Excuse me, and of course, BuzzGunShop.com. I like to mention all the people that help us. You know, even in the Sunday shoot arounds, because we really do appreciate their support. Uh, you know, one thing I was going to talk about, and it was really uh, on my list, and if I'm not careful, I get too long. And again, I'm not drinking alcoholic beverages here. <clears throat> Had a little cigar. There we go. Throat dry. But uh, in the uh, comments, I'm seeing people talk about, uh, um, and four or five people have written me, uh, I've, or I've seen uh, messages, I just, gosh, I'm getting so many, I just can't answer them, I apologize, but about doing some videos themselves and starting a channel. You know, people are, I see more people starting a channel and ask me about it, you know, and that kind of thing. I guess because so many people are home and they maybe have thought about it before and hey, it might be a good time to do that, you know, and they're doing a lot of stuff they haven't done before, maybe filming the family and, and uh, maybe they're already putting stuff on YouTube and they're just uh, curious about maybe some tips for maybe broadening that experience and doing something like what we're doing or other people do on, on YouTube. You know, maybe it's guns or not gun related, you know, whatever. And we did an FAQ on that because we've always gotten questions about that. Uh, you want to know, you know, like, like we're experts, you know. But uh, on that, and uh, we did an FAQ video on it, you know, and I don't know what number it was, but uh, basically I said, just do, do what you enjoy doing. That was really the advice in that FAQ, a very short FAQ video. Uh, do what you like doing, and, uh, and people will watch it or they won't, and there's a grow or it won't, uh, but it's, it's just enjoy doing it. Pick out something that you enjoy doing. That was kind of our philosophy, and because that's what we did, though. All I know is what we did. I cannot relate to, to people, and, and you know, the reality, that's probably most people that have a YouTube channel right now, doing whatever they're doing, whether it's cat videos or car videos, gun videos, most people, uh, I, I guess that's correct in terms of numbers, percentages, looked at the landscape and saw uh, a lot of us doing, you know, gun videos or other people doing car videos or whatever. And said, you know, I could do that. I want to do some of that. And they, they just start doing it. They start trying to figure out what, what they could do that maybe is different or what they excel at or their area of interest and how they could get people to come and watch it, you know, how they could get subscribers and maybe make some money, you know, doing it. Because, you know, if you get some AdSense, you can make a little money, even still from as well. If you're doing cat videos, I guess you can make a lot of money. If you're doing gun videos, you know, the, the internet world doesn't like gun videos, at least the, the Googles of the world and everybody. Uh, so you get either no ads or limited ads on, you know, most of what you do, or you get totally demonetized, just depending. But, uh, but anyway, there's a chance to make a little money. And, and so that's an attraction, a second job. A, a hobby that you know can actually pay you something maybe and maybe you get enough viewers that you can actually have sponsors you get do sponsored videos and all that sort of thing that's a heck of an attraction because you're already thinking about doing something you're interested in probably you know a little bit about a hobby whatever it might be and you could turn this into a this could be a little business for you you know so you know I, I mean I guess that's really the motivation for most people you know really uh, 
and we came at it from such a different perspective that I, I almost can't relate to that. And because I often tell people, you know, this was accidental for the most part, and no marketing plan or anything like that. You know, and, which ironic, I was actually in sales for a period of time, uh, different kind of sales and publishing and you know marketing and that sort of thing to some extent. But this this was nothing you know like that because I just decided to put it on YouTube for a lark, really. Didn't know that you could make money. I didn't know anybody even. I didn't know YouTube paid. There were even. I didn't know that existed until I don't know nine months or a year into doing it. And then YouTube asked if we wanted to be partners. Got an email from them one day, and I go, like, "Yeah, right. Okay, so we get ten bucks a month. Buy some buy a box of ammo." I actually said that to John because you had to say yes or no whether or not you wanted to be a partner. You had a degree or not. And we weren't sure, you know, so I guess, as long as the, the uh, I don't know what they're gonna do with ads. If they're annoying, I guess we can get back out of it, you know. And we'll use that 10 bucks or 20 bucks to, if that's what it is, if it's that much, to buy a box of ammo or something. And I remember we were sitting in a restaurant when we talked about that, because I got the email and then we met uh, to eat somewhere. And uh, he was a lot younger then, I said it was 12 years ago. He was a teenager. Yeah, he was 19, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or 20 and uh, so so we came out from a different place you know just just putting these things up for, for kind of fun and I was, had been a teacher and so well, I was still a teacher at that time and I and, uh, thought it'd be kind of fun and you know show people how a Glock breaks down or uh, how lever action works and try to indoctrinate people into the cowboy uh, way the cowboy firearms all that sort of thing and and then it just uh, you know, it just got bigger and then became what it is. So, so, so we we have a totally different experience than most people. Okay, and I think most of you know that. But because of that, it's pretty, <laughs> it's it's pretty much uh, it's pretty much proof that that we're just doing what we like to do. That's the only reason we even did it. You know, and uh, started it, and for a long time did it, and we just continue doing what we've always done. You know, so. So there was never any kind of marketing plan or, oh my gosh, maybe we could make some money doing this. Or why wow, we, what if we got enough viewers that we could get some sponsors or, uh, you know, YouTube uh, AdSense. Yeah. That was not a radar, none of that. We didn't even, I mean, it was so far off the radar, you know, as the moon is up there. So anyway, come from it, uh, come to it from a different perspective. So I can't relate to that. But I know that's how most people probably are thinking these days. You know, nice second job. But anyway, they, so they ask us, well, you have any advice? You know, or what do you say? How'd you get started? Do you have any advice? I haven't seen the videos where I've talked about this before and everything. And I don't, I don't have any great advice other than that to do, to do something you enjoy, okay? You folks at home with a lot of time on your hands, a camera, a YouTube channel, <laughs> the ability to, to make one. Uh, try to think of something uh, now. I don't want to come off as a pro here uh, again I freely admit this was accidental Okay, I am no genius. I have to tell you that this this was accidental for the most part Okay, did not plan it at all for whatever it is Okay, you may say it's not much, you know, he's making gun videos, you know, but uh, whatever it is it was uh, it was uh, a surprise, I guess you'd say. Okay, uh, how 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 many people came to watch and all that. Okay, and being able to do what we did—that was a surprise, a pleasant surprise. Okay, uh, so I, I can't come off as uh, well. Let me tell you how to do this. Uh, yeah, well, first you need to do a marketing plan. You may need to make notes on it. Now. Can't do that. Sorry, but my own f philosophy and my advice is to try to think of something you enjoy doing. I hope the wind's not making it too bad or annoying on you, any more annoying than my voice. It's getting a little blustery here, but I put up a piece of cardboard to, to block uh, some of that. It probably blow over, it's, it's taped to a barrel, you ought to see it. <laughs> like, like most movie sets, if you can see what's off camera, you <laughs> probably laugh. I got an old, well, the old barrel that's shot up here. I got, a, I got blue tape around it, holding a, a target to block some of the wind, so, anyway. <coughs> I hope that helps. But that was one of the things I, I was going to uh, talk about briefly. Uh, try to try to think of something. If, if you're really serious about maybe doing it, 
something you like or an area of whatever it is you like that you think would be fun to do videos on and and that people you know might like okay might find useful might be some useful information okay and if nothing else but just entertaining or a mixture and kind of, I guess, ask yourself, what, what do I have to offer? You know, what, what can I do? What, what's my experience with this? And why am I making videos on it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, and, and again, I always say, try to do something useful, you know, because there's a lot of useful stuff on, on YouTube. And that's one of the values of it, isn't it? And there's a lot of entertaining stuff. And that's useful, you know, good entertainment, right? Uh, I think, I think, uh, do something you can enjoy doing and then it doesn't matter how how big it gets or whatever if you enjoy doing it maybe if it's just your family your friends get a kick out of it uh people you run into that are in the same hobby or whatever it is and so you gradually pick up a few uh viewers that are loyal and they, they like it and maybe you just get a few hundred subscribers but you really enjoy doing it so what I mean, I'll be searching around looking for information on something. I'll pop to some video, uh, maybe it's about a gun or about anything, and a camera or something, you know, and somebody's doing a pretty good video on it. And I'll look, who's this? You know, they got a thousand and a half or 1.5 thousand subscribers or something. So you don't have to have some big channel to do a good job on whatever it is you do to actually offer something to the universe, right? And uh, so just something you enjoy doing, uh, just, just focus on whatever it is you think you do well. And I think people focus too much on production value. Of course, I would say that, right? Because our production value is so, so bad. But, but sometimes people get all caught up in, uh, I've got to have a $10,000 camera or a slow-mo cam or, a, or whatever it is, and that'll be the ticket. Then I'll get some views. Not necessarily, not necessarily. I mean, we play with that with our sound. I mean, we get some criticism for our sound. And uh, we've talked a little bit about that. The, uh, obviously, I could, with pocket change, I could buy a, mic, a lapel mic. Like mean, people act like, I, well, you need to save up and buy a lapel mic. You know? <laughs> it's not that, you know, okay? I could buy 10 tomorrow if I want. I mean, everything we do is intentional, all right? We, we enjoy, and I think most of you do, uh, and it kind of depends on, very quickly, uh, the sound is more natural the way we do it, if you didn't notice that, okay? Uh, and a lot of people say that. They, wow, what kind of camera are you using? You're the only channel where the gunfire sounds natural, or not, again, not to separate us, but they'll, they'll say things like that quite often. Well, that's a trade-off. With a lapel mic, the gunfire is gonna sound different, okay? And then, plus, it's a little weird, too. I walk over, it sounds like I'm right here in the camera at the perfect distance, room, no matter where I'm doing it, and even that's a little weird. And plus, I got this thing attached to me all the time. You got to get wired up, and 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 maybe that's the way we'll go. I don't know. We thought about it several times, um, but it changes things, okay? And then two, quite often the comments that, that we do see, it's uh, it, I do that in my house. So I'm uh, looking at a D or something. I'll just put one earbud in maybe, and uh, and then well, what's wrong with that sound? Doesn't sound quite right. You know, it's coming and going or something. I put the other one in because we use a stereo mic. And if you don't have both ears in, it's not gonna sound right. And I put the other ear in, oh yeah, it's fine. So that's a lot of it if you're, if you're getting weird sound, okay? It's going away too much and that kind of thing. But just the way we do it, there's naturally gonna be a little variation, okay? It gets too annoying to enough people, to everybody. You know, obviously, we'll, we'll go to the lapel thing and on my belt and do all that. Yeah, we don't really want to, that's why we haven't. Uh, but, you know, so anyway. People get way too caught up sometimes in, uh, and that's a kind of off topic, I guess, but in the production value and having the most expensive camera. You know, Demolition Ranch uses some, like a pocket camera. It's under $1,000, I think. And you know, we've been with him several times when he's making stuff and holds it out there. And, you know, that, you know and look, look how big and, and all the stuff he's doing. You know, so it's, it's mainly what you're doing. That's the main thing, what you have to offer. Uh, so you can do it on the cheap and do just fine. Do your phone you know some people make their videos with their phone it's not that big a deal uh you know i was a i guess i'm just a simple man i mean i well, even when i was teaching back to that i uh i, I was pretty good with powerpoint you know in fact i taught powerpoint computer enrichment different things and 
and I was kind of a I, not an expert, but I, I knew the things uh, to teach the children, the kids, you know, how to do a good PowerPoint, things not to do, because what they want to do is cram all this text on one slide, you know, that kind of thing, the obvious issues. That's why you have PowerPoints. You can advance, you know, and have main points. Hey, you can have a more powerful point using PowerPoint or something like that, right? Uh, and I noticed uh, there for a period of time when uh, we got everybody at computers, kids all had laptops and everything, that and we were teaching PowerPoint and all those things, that, that most of the teachers, it seemed like, they were PowerPointing the kids to death. They really were. At first, it was kind of neat. It was a novelty, you know, to present, you know, still so using a board chalk or whatever, marker board, different things. And have a PowerPoint, man, because we had the ceiling uh, projections and everything and do whatever's on your laptop it was up there and I mean a long time ago like 15 years ago so uh, and and I was doing some of that too but I really I got to a point where I don't know cutting the lights down low and doing that and I, I, I just I kind of got away from it to tell you the truth and here I was I was one of the leaders in technology there uh, I, I mean I was like the I was supposed to be the guru you know one of the gurus in technology and helped start all that there and I found myself the last four or five years I was there even though we were a laptop school using the laptops less and less in class I really did uh, and and even me from the front of the room or wherever on PowerPoint using that less and less and I would, I think of so many days where the class was with all this technology. Here I was sitting on my desk or sitting in a chair or had a chair with rollers on, a regular chair, I'm just going blow over, a regular chair with rollers. And you know, the kids would tell you, and we'd be just discussing the novel or whatever we're reading. And I would just kind of roll around in front of the room and sit there and we'd, somebody read and we'd discuss it, talk about it. And, I'd roll back down the aisle, pick on somebody. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with that roller chair. But down on their level, which it being 6'8", I, I thought that was good too. I'd just sit down and uh, I was sort of on their level and it was it just worked out well. And is just talk with them. I'm sure some of them thought it was boring. A lot of them didn't because I heard from them and still do. But, you know, uh, pizzazzing people with the PowerPoint was good sometimes, but I don't know. It, it just comes down to simple sometimes is better, I think. And, and so don't get too caught up in all that. Don't obsess over that kind of stuff anyway. So that's one of my points, and I don't know if I get to all these points before my battery dies and you die from old age watching this video. But uh, so just be yourself and, uh, and do what you enjoy doing. Now, I do have a few things not to do. I'll cover a few of those. How's that? How's my advice? <clears throat> Again, I'm the expert, right? Who accidentally am where I am, wherever that is. Well, don't obsess with the equipment. That's that's one of them I talked about, right? Uh, the production value. Uh, what else did I write down here as I was brainstorming? I, I think try to main, maintain your real life is important. And this, again, is getting a little philosophical. I've always been into photography a little bit. You know, and then so I was early on in digital photography and just everything. Uh, I think you have to be careful, and I think you can relate to this. If you're not careful, a photographer, a movie maker, or maybe Spielberg, whoever, you begin to, your whole world, it's understandable, you begin to view the whole world through a camera lens. And when you're out and around, you're not really maybe fully appreciating these woods. I look at these trees, I, this, to, just to the right of you, I don't know why you can't see them. There are some beautiful woods with huge trees. People, uh, loggers always coming by wanting to buy them, you know, and uh, timber, cut the timber on this place. And, and we won't ever uh, let them do it or sell it, but unless we had to. But uh, uh, when I look at those, I just admire, man, beautiful big old trees and growing out in the spring and everything. And, uh, wonderful. You know, my mother loved trees, and uh, I do too, and the woods, you know, and everything. But, you know, it's easy if, if your whole life is, is doing videos and you're always thinking about a video, and everywhere you go, you're trying to get some footage for this and that, you know, or you're thinking about making a movie, you're, you're Spielberg, you're Clint Eastwood, you know, how, that, how would that look? And, you know, I'm afraid that uh, it's really easy to fall into, man, that'd be a great photograph. Where's my camera? Yeah, yeah, the light's just right, all that. Or that'd be a great scene. 
uh, backdrop for, for a video or doing this or that. So I think sometimes we end up uh, losing reality uh, if we're not careful. You know, just try to be yourself and don't lose yourself. You know, I think back again, I think I mentioned last week, my favorite books is Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And some of you reacted to that and that you had read it. It was your favorite book or one of your favorites. Uh, I had a discussion with one guy about some parts in the book and everything, but uh, I think it's early on in the novel. He uh, he said, if you call the novel, but early on he, uh, he, he talks about, he and his son are on this motorcycle, this trip across the Northwest. And, and where are they? It's part of the Grand Canyon, I think it is. Yeah, it extends up that far. And anyway, there's an overlook and, and they want to get up, go up to the overlook to look over to the canyon uh, too and everything. And he talks about being turned off by everybody up there at the overlook, you know, with their cameras, getting pictures of it. And it made him not almost not want to look at it, you know, and because they're seeing it through those cameras and, and their interpretation of that is just really just trying to get the best picture out of it, you know, and uh, he just wanted to come up there and see it and his son to just just see it and admire it for what it is, the beauty of it and not be obsessed with what kind of picture they can take back from it. You know, that kind of, I don't know if you get that or not, but uh, nothing wrong with taking pictures. Like I said, I've always loved to snap pictures, but I try to, to keep that in mind and I, I'll get a couple of shots or something like that. I want to document and then put my camera away, put my phone away. You know, I'm bad about not taking pictures. You know that from various events we go to and sometimes I'll put up two or three lame photos. I forgot to take pictures, you know? So, you know, just something to think about. Keep your life real if you possibly can. Your life is not a, uh, a, uh, a YouTube video, really. Uh, and uh, you can lose your personality, uh, you know, your real personality, I think, very easily. Well, look around YouTube, you know, look at some of the people you see, they're actually entertaining or funny or whatever. Is that really who they are, you reckon? I, I don't know, it doesn't matter, I guess, but hopefully they're a real person somewhere in their life. So be yourself, don't adulterate your integrity and who you really are, okay? It's kind of, I guess, what I'm getting at. Uh, and you might not want, if you're not careful, you'll become somebody you're not, you'll become a, you'll develop a personality, I think, that's not you, without meaning to, you know, just to get attention. And you might turn yourself into something you don't like, so just be aware of that, just to try to get, you know, clicks and, and all of that. And uh, another point, I guess, is, is if you do videos, and this is not gonna happen early on, but one thing I see is such a turnoff whatever you're looking at, car videos, gun videos, Jeep videos, nature videos, whatever the heck it might be. You know, once you get to a certain level, the people that are doing those, they, they get, I don't know, jealous of each other or whatever. And maybe someone's made a comment about them or back and forth, they get into that stupid middle school drama thing, you know, or, and they end up spending too much time uh, justifying what they do and how they do things. And there's a UPS man, I hope he's bringing ammo. <laughs> hearing blowing his horn like they do. But I mean, really, really, you know, I mean, it's just uh, such an incredible turnoff. I go to a video and they're, they're talking at all about how they do it the right way and this kind of thing. They don't even mention maybe other other uh, video makers, but it's like, uh, it's, you're just supposed to gather and infer from them that they're doing it the right way. They're the ones with the integrity. They're the ones that are real. It's like, just go away, do what you do and don't worry about other people, you know. And so that's a big turn off to me. I don't know if it is to everybody, but, but just being, being obsessed, being obsessed with what other people are doing uh, in the same area is just a sign of, uh, I don't know, lack of self-esteem. It's revealing, very revealing, you know, when you're just, you're trying to get clicks, trying to get Patreon members, you're trying to get money, you know, from, from views, you're trying to get views, you're desperate to get that as much as possible by using crazy, uh, crazy stuff. Just doing crazy stuff to get it. Okay, it's just, it's just so revealing, you know. And it's easy to fall into that because as you see views, the view count maybe going up, subscriber count you know, increasing, and uh, maybe some money being made. You know, oh my gosh, 
I could I could make a second job out of this, or, or I could I could uh, end up with ten thousand or a hundred thousand subscribers if I keep working at this, and if I could just do this a little more, be a little more, bit, a little more dramatic about that, and that sort of thing. So avoid that if you get into it. Please, now I'm talking down the road probably if you're just talking about just getting started, but I'm catching you. I'm nipping it in the bud giving you my my fatherly grandfatherly advice be yourself do what you enjoy doing try to be real unless that words over you I know real but what's real what's reality uh, I mean it might be that what you're doing you don't want to be yourself you know you're you're kind of playing a persona or you're uh, you're being a comic or you're, uh, or you're just trying to be funny or outrageous yeah depending on what you're doing but if you're doing it and that's fine, isn't it? It's it's people that, that kind of pretend to be real, or they 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 take on like they are somebody they're really not. But it's you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. It's just kind of sad. It. I mean, when you're in front of a camera very much, it's like someone who drinks a lot. You really learn who they are, you know. And uh, so people are going to learn more about you just just by the nature of it. Just like us, you know. We we spend so much time in front of the camera. My God, I don't know why we do. <laughs> But uh, it just, I don't know, it just turned into this, you know, me standing in the woods talking and everything. Uh, part, I mean, in my own defense, it's, there's a lot of you out there that watch, and we kind of have developed a, a rapport, a, a relationship to some extent, and you're always asking lots of questions, and, and uh, I don't know. So there's enough of you that are just really loyal viewers, and, and I feel like I want to talk to you. You know, and uh, and so that's that's why I do it. I can I can very easily put the camera on the railroad tracks, let the train run over it, and never never see a camera again. And I'm in, and fine. I would be doing basically what I'm doing: hanging out on the place, pulling out my favorite guns and shooting them, and hiking and biking around here, and and hanging out in gun stores and gun shops or gun uh, shows if they ever come around again. <laughs> and living my regular life, okay? Because that is my regular life outside of doing videos. But So try to keep it real, as people say, whatever that means, right? Because, I mean, there is some money to be made, you know? And, and uh, you know, and there's that attraction out there. If you get enough viewers, enough subscribers, enough attention, hey, who, who can hate that? And uh, so I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't, you know, talk about that, because we do very well because we have sponsors and, and we have a lot of views and everything. So, you know, that's an attraction to be self-employed. You know, I was already employed. So again, that was not a motivation. Didn't know it was even a possibility. And I've never, I've never been in a position uh, and a fortune, I've been fortunate to where I, like I didn't have a job and man, maybe I can make some money with this camera. So I've never, I've never experienced that desperation that, that some people do in their defense, in the defense of some of the folks who do some really stupid stuff and they spend half their time just criticizing other, maybe other YouTubers or other people in the, the media who are relatively famous and that, that'll get them attention, right? And get them clicks, maybe get them Patreon members and that kind of thing. So I've never been in the position where I was uh, uh, desperate to, 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 to even think about that. Now I wouldn't have done it, I mean, but that's just not my nature, but still, you know, in, in people's defense, it's a, quite an attraction to think, wow, I might have a career with a camera, you know, and I'm totally independent and can almost can do almost whatever I want to do. So that's uh, that's that's pretty heady stuff, you know. So, so I understand that. So anyway, uh, I don't find anything else useful or not. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, one thing about sponsorship, I made a note, you know. Uh, if if you did something and you don't know you don't know like this was a total surprise to me it could be that you are pretty knowledgeable about some field whatever it is you at least have some interest in firearms or you wouldn't be here right but but you may be really knowledgeable in other areas maybe it's in uh, vehicles or, or just whatever it is uh, and you don't even realize how smart you are about it because you just known about it, studied it your whole life, maybe it has something to do with your career even. And, uh, and you also don't realize that maybe people would like you on camera. You just don't know. 
you know, they might hate you, they might like you. You don't even know what your style would be. You've just done a couple of videos messing around. You're not even familiar, you're not comfortable maybe with the camera yet, okay? And it is weird talking to a camera. But uh, as I look at my earlier videos, and I'm, uh, I'm not real awkward, but I, uh, I think a lot of people think, well, I, I'm awkward talking to people. I was not really that way teaching. Uh, there was something, because I come from the classroom where I was completely relaxed, come home and make a video that same day even. We did that sometimes. <laughs> and I was more awkward talking to the camera. It takes a little getting used to, and I'm, I'm not a master at that, that's for sure. But, but, uh, but anyway, you don't even know that yet, maybe. You, know, you might do a few videos, and the more you do it, you get more relaxed. And people will really like you and what you have to say about whatever it is you're doing. And you might just uh, really, I don't know about blow up, but you might really start to grow with something. And you might be surprised. There are people, as we all know, there, there's so many areas of interest in, in this world. And if you have anything at all to offer, you, you right now, not, not even being aware of it, might have the potential, without even thinking hard about it, to make the best videos on that topic whether it's in the rocks, rock collecting, or in model car building, I don't know, whatever it might be, firearms. And uh, it, you, know, you, can, you might be a sensation, and you, you're not even aware of that, okay? But, uh, you know, we, we had no clue we would get uh, this many subscribers and viewers, and no, no clue. And subscribers are, are just one indicator. It's, it's, a, it's, it's not like subscribing to a magazine, right? But it's a it's a barometer of some sorts. At least it, it about all it does tell you is uh, that the whatever if you got a hundred thousand subscribers, a hundred thousand people saw something you did. It's like a vote, and they liked it enough. Hmm. I want to be reminded when that person puts up a video, right? So they clicked, you know, subscribe. So that's really it's just kind of a vote of confidence, nothing else. But but you know, it means a lot and. And, you know, people don't get back to see every video, of course. They don't even go to the home channel, and that's just the nature of it. You're going to have a percentage of, of those subscribers come back and watch, you know, videos, of course. But, it, but it's an indicator of who, uh, who likes what you do. And, but so, anyway, you might have a lot of potential and don't even, don't even realize it. Uh, and uh, the last point is you might actually have a, the potential to have sponsorship. Okay, like per video of some kind, uh, or, uh, or or general sponsorship like we have, or just whatever. And so, keep that in mind. All that other stuff I was talking about. If your goal is to be just a total idiot uh, on YouTube, guess what? How many companies are going to want to sponsor you? Right. So you know, companies are in business to. Uh, to, to whatever, sell their products or make money or whatever they, they do, whatever they do. And they want people to represent them. And I was in sales for a while uh, in the publishing world. And I mean, you know, you're representing uh, that company to an extent. Now, that's different when you have a sponsor. I'm not really representing federal, but in a way I am, okay? Uh, if I'm a, a total idiot, they're, they're not gonna wanna help us. You know, if I own an ammo company or whatever, you know, the people that, that help us, support us, uh, uh, Buzz Guns or whoever it is, um, I'm looking around for uh, some exposure and who I want to be associated with, who I would like maybe to be associated with. It wouldn't take much to turn me off, would you? If you've got a successful company of any kind, uh, you're going to be pretty darn selective uh, you know, even in today's world, where anything goes, it seems, right? Uh, because, like, why? You know, they'll tell what that idiot's going to do or say or what do we have to do? We want our company associated with, with that, you know? So uh, just, just something to keep in mind, you know, if that's like an ultimate goal. You know, you'll hear people, uh, you know, often <laughs> in videos, whether it's guns or cars or anything, so, when I, we take no sponsorship, yeah, we turn down sponsor, yeah, right. Uh, who would sponsor you uh, and, and not because of the size of your channel but just because of the idiocy that comes out of your mouth you know who would, you know who'd want to sponsor you you know so a little rationalization you know uh, going on there but just keep that in mind okay if, if you really do have even the slightest notion 
that this might be something that could grow, you know. Uh, just do, it, do things the right way. Do things the right way. Okay, you know what I mean by that. All right, I got to let you all go. I've talked too long. Again, I'm justifying this by the fact that you're locked in. <laughs> you're locked in and you've been listening to your spouse, your kids, the TV, or nobody, you know, so many hours a day that you'll even welcome me, somebody different for, you know, an hour or whatever it's been, okay? All right, do I have anything important to say? Guns we've been shooting, I was gonna mention, uh, the, uh, uh, the the ones you see here, of course. Uh, yeah, makes us to take that dad's gun apart and see what's going on with that. But yeah, man, we have been shooting a lot. You know, the, the one a day video, hey, I'm still keeping it up, right? Right. And uh, even though I did the long, boring cleaning video, <laughs> but every day we posted something and uh, we're keeping our word on that and we will keep our word, barring any technology problem because we have, uh, we've been working hard and we did several videos this week, had a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, shot the 10 millimeters some more, did some comparisons. What have I shot? I have, I brought out the Dirty Harry 44 Magnum, six and a half inch. Oh man, uh, just so many things. The Model 12 shotgun, uh, just, I I've had a blast this week, I uh, really had. Y'all have made me work harder than ever. But, uh, and what you see is, you, you, don't, you don't know, we got some videos in the bank, we got videos we're doing, they churn, they churn. You see a new video, you see an old video, you see a mixture, but that's just the way we operate to keep the variety going. But our videos are timeless, you know, really. I mean, as our uh, YouTube uh, consultant tells us, uh, they're evergreen. That's the term, you know, for that. They're evergreen. They're not timely. Like if I did a, a like a weekly update on the news, you know, who wants to go? You're looking through YouTube and you uh, you see a, a video uh, news update from March third, uh, two thousand nineteen. I mean, you know, you, okay, uh, who cares what happened then? Maybe. Uh, <clears throat> so, but you know, if you're uh, you know doing a video on a Henry rifle. A Henry 1860 rifle or a Sharps uh, carbine or something, you know, they, they, they haven't changed in 150 years and, uh, you know, so that's, that's the beauty of what we do. Uh, they're not, nothing really is time sensitive, hardly. And so, uh, you know, we just do a video when the weather's nice and, uh, and uh, we try to have variety. But man, we've had fun, uh, a lot, a lot of fun. That 44 is so much fun, that shotgun is so much fun. This little gun here was a lot of fun. I'll, we'll post that before long. You know, I prefer the Centennial models. You know, this is pinned and recess, or pinned. It's not recessed, you know, it's that pinned barrel. I don't know that, uh, somebody tell me, did they ever recess counter bore the cylinders on the little model 36? I don't think they did. Maybe they did in the earliest ones. John's got one made in 69, and it's not. And this one's not, this is 70. Uh, I don't know if they ever did uh, recess the chambers or kind of bore those on these. I, I just don't know. I, I've had an old one. I can't think. But they're still pinned, of course, up until, what, the early 80s. And uh, it, there's something pretty cool. Now, I don't go for new-in-the-box guns as collectors. I, my gosh, you certain, some models, you'd pay many thousands of dollars, you know, to get a new-in-the-box gun if it's you know, made in 19... 10 or something, depending on what it is. And, but this one, uh, it wasn't all that different price-wise, and it was obviously new. And I thought, you know what, that's pretty cool, because I was looking for one anyway, and having a hard time finding one. I wanted one in good shape, and uh, I probably paid another 100 or 200 bucks for it because of that. And I don't know, I, I don't know if I did or not. If it had been shot a few times, it might have just been $100 less. I don't know, it was an auction. Uh, the, the one reason I don't want to pay too much extra for a new in a box gun is why? You know the answer. Because once I get it, about an hour later, it's not going to be new in the box, is it? It's going to be fired. It's a used gun. <laughs> so, but this thing shoots right on, boy. I mean, I mean, it's it. I, I took a shot at the gong uh, and hit the gong with it, and it's just the first shot. 
and it's just right on. Very popular J frame 38 special, you know. Uh, pretty good old guns, always have been. So anyway, I'll let you go and uh, quit yakking uh, at you. Appreciate you watching and uh, coming around. And uh, a lot of you uh, seem to be enjoying the daily video. Just remember, it's only April. <laughs> it's only April. Or else we'll end up doing stupid stuff too. You know, stuff I was cautioning you against if you're starting a YouTube channel. Uh, we'll be those same desperate people. You know, oh my gosh, we've run out of ideas. Uh, who do we bash? Uh, how do we get attention? You know, got to get clicks. Got to, got, you know, we got to do something to uh, to get attention. So, no, nah, I wouldn't do that uh, ever. But, uh, but, but, you know, I mean, you know, we we, uh, we want to post uh, gun videos and real videos. And as you as you notice, we're just posting the same things that we would be posting. Okay, that's that's we didn't want to do this unless we could do that. Now, obviously, anybody can make a video a day. I could do one of these every day and just yak at you. But we could, uh, you know, easily make a video every day. Uh, just not be worth much or be different. Maybe the ones we do, you don't think are worth much, but they're uh, they're they're one of our our videos, or one of our series. Whether it's a small game hunt or a woods walk, a main video, and just whatever it might be. You're seeing uh, some guns you haven't seen before. Uh, you see, like the Browning uh, high power, just whatever, FN high power, uh, uh, you name it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the uh, 1911 uh, Ed Brown uh, big game hunt. That was fun doing that with a 1911. Uh, I answered someone on that. Somebody was talking about the special forces. I, I, I don't like that gun. John doesn't either. Uh, the fact that it's got special forces, it's the model name of the gun. There's just something that hits me the wrong way. I was telling that guy that I know I feel a little bit like a mall ninja, you know, having a firearm that has special forces on it, a poser, you know. It's like uh, I'm probably going to sell that gun to somebody, maybe in the special forces. You know, that's who needs to own that thing. If you're if you are a former special forces, or you're a current special forces uh, member, uh, or even maybe military, but especially if you're a special forces, an SF guy gal uh you know uh i'll sell that gun to you i'll, I'll make you a deal on it you got to prove your special forces though okay you got to prove it because there's a lot of navy seals out there and <laughs> they're all over the internet aren't they but uh, i love the gun oh my gosh the trigger and i, I can shoot it pretty well uh it's, it's just something uh, about that uh about the name of it it's, it's rubs me the wrong way so uh uh but anyway, it was a review gun, and I uh, got a pretty good deal on it, and uh, couldn't pass it up, and that kind of thing. But, but not not to, not to bash uh, Ed Brown uh, 1911s at all. I mean, I, I like them. I like the philosophy. Uh, I'm always making fun of full-length guide rods, and, and most of their guns they don't use. Yeah, they they're just basic, high-quality steel, high-quality uh, firearm. Like that thing is just like a, like a Colt, you know. Series 70 type thing starting out as just basic, basic 1911 with much better, of course, beaver tail and parts and hand fit and made the right way and all that. But not a lot of extra bells and whistles that you don't need or anything like that. Just a, a well made gun, you know, kind of like the old Volvo, it's just a good solid 1911. You know? So, anyway, trigger is so important you know, if you're going to hit something, it really is. Good trigger. I gotta shut up. I may have gone two hours. Uh, if I have, I don't even remember what time it was when I started, or know what time it was. I might have to edit out something. Okay. So if you see any little, I don't know, jumps in it, uh, that's what I've done. Uh, I just did that one time, I think. So, but I don't know. I think I've exceeded my limit. I've exceeded my brain power too, and I ramble so much. Uh, it's a miracle I've not said a lot of things that have gotten me in trouble over the years. You know, it really is. When you just talk off the top of your head this much, you really are at risk to sign a point <laughs> of saying something, offending somebody you didn't mean to offend, implying something you, you didn't mean to apply, imply at all. You know, you see some of that stuff around, you know, the internet, you know, and some of the drama. And uh, I, I've got better things to do than insult people. Okay, 
Uh, so that's never on, on my mind. There are, there are uh, I guess, behaviors or you know, that sort of thing that, that I, that I uh, notice in hum, humans, human beings, whether it's on the internet or other places that I find eh, you know, obnoxious maybe. But I've got better things to do than pick on individuals, you know, that, that sort of thing. It's just uh, not, not part of my makeup. And uh, people do what they want to do. And uh, I tend to see the glass half full. I like to assume people are doing the best they can with what they have. I know that's not always the case, but I try to assume that, okay? And that if they really, they really are a problem in society, I. I even assume they're, they've had a, a, a bad upbringing and have had some poor parenting, they've had a bad experience in childhood. You know, that, that's kind of what causes people to go off, off the runway lots of times, you know, having really bad experiences when they were kids or, or something or even adults and they just are not dealing with it well, you know. A lot of people have sad lives. John and I talk about that, you know, how lucky we are. I was. He is, has been in so many ways, because uh, we all have our problems. We all have uh, the tragedies of life, you know, the loss of different things, but disappointments here and there. But, uh, yeah, there are some people, though, that have a lot worse than that. You know, they've, they've lived in abusive environments, you know, maybe when they were kids or, or just, just whatever. You know, we know it's in the newspaper, right? Is there news, are, are there newspapers anymore? Yeah. But we know that you know, some people have horrible experiences uh, growing up or even later in life. And life just deals them uh, a bad deck, a bad hand, you know, from the deck. Uh, sometimes not just when they're young, but even continuously, just the ran randomness of life. You know, things happen. Uh, or my best friends, very best friends, that lost both of his sons when they were both like middle school and high school in a car wreck. You know, just the ran randomness of, uh, of, of things that can happen, you know. Uh, and so, anyway, I like to assume that, you know, that I'm the way I am. I'm a product of my environment and, and so is everybody else. Now, it doesn't excuse obnoxious behavior towards other people or violent behavior and that kind of thing. It's, still doesn't excuse it, but uh, I don't know, it, it might be where it comes from, yeah, a lot of it, right? So anyway, stay armed and ready, and uh, hopefully we can get through this uh, this crazy period. I've got it better than a lot of people, as I keep saying. I'm fully aware of that, and uh, hopefully your situation is not too bad, and maybe, depending on where we live, you live, we can come creeping out of the uh, tunnel here a little bit more and uh, maybe uh, be a ball game played, you know, who knows? I would like to, I, I, I don't watch a lot of sports, but I, I watch some football. I watch uh, the NBA playoffs. I kind of miss those not going on. Some of you watch baseball. You, I'm sure you miss that and different things. Uh, and as much as anything, your kid's getting out playing soccer and baseball and all this stuff, you know, maybe you too. So we'll get through it. And I'll see you next Sunday. And I promise, can I keep this promise? I think so. I'll be shorter next Sunday, okay? So y'all have a good week. And I will talk to you later. And I will figure out this gun. And if I need to, which I think I do, get it to a gunsmith. If there's any of them working these days, right? <laughs> Take care. Life is good. <laughs>